things go nowadays. <laughs> okay, folks, we are now right outside of the main Topeka post office. I don't think it's open. It's 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 still the beautiful post office at Fourth and or Fifth and Kansas Avenue. And with me is Andy Tuttle from Lawrence. He is the president of the Kansas State Letter Carriers Association. Did I get that right, Andy? Uh, Kansas State Association of Letter Carriers. Okay, I almost good. got it. That's good, Kansas Phil. State Association of K. A S A L C. Okay. All right. Well, Andy, you've got a lot of friends here today and a lot of things going on. And, and like I said, I'm just getting here. Tell me what's happening here today. Well, so today on Columbus Day, October 8th, it's a nationwide day of action. And we are rallying, all four postal unions are rallying uh, basically in support of the public post office and in opposition to privatization of the postal service. Is that a problem? Is that a threat? Well, uh, there was an, uh, uh, an OMB report that came out recently that was uh, actually over the summer that was encouraging the privatization of the Postal Service, much like had been done in Western Europe. However, the problem with that is, if you want to use Western Europe as a model, prices have gone up dramatically, service has gone down dramatically. Uh, in the United States, it would result in thousands of offices being closed, it would hurt rural Americans, it would hurt the elderly, it would hurt impoverished Americans, and it would take uh, job opportunities away from veterans. So, and let me ask you this, Andy, are you, are you concerned right now that that's going that direction, or you just want to make your statement today, let's, let's just nip it in the bud, so to speak? Well, that's part of the deal. There is currently a, uh, a resolution in front of both the House and Senate, and uh, you know, obviously it's not a law, it's not binding, but it, what it is is a sense of the House resolution that will uh, basically where members of Congress are standing against a privatized postal service. Uh, in the House, we have 219 co-sponsors, so we have hit a majority. Uh, in the Senate, we have 41 co-sponsors. In Kansas, Senator Moran has been a co-sponsor, and Representatives Marshall and Yoder have signed on opposing privatization. What about the other representatives then? Uh, we haven't so far, we, we haven't so far gotten their support, but we're, we're hopeful. So, okay, at this point then, do you feel like they're in favor of privatization? Or they just haven't, no, they just no, haven't done either No, no, I, I think there are, and, and even Roberts has a statement out uh, in opposition to privatized postal service. He hasn't signed on, though. We, why, why is this important? Again, just, and I'm thinking, before I even came over here, the sure. one question I did have for you, what does this mean for local people, you know, people like myself who have a mailbox out in front of their house? Well, that mailbox might be down on the corner or the next corner, and you might be checking your mail at seven o'clock at night in the dark, and your elderly neighbor who's going to get their medication might be checking the mail in the dark at night in the snow, as opposed to just opening their door or pulling it out of their mail slot. So that would be one of the service reductions, would be centralized delivery. And that's not going to be user friendly to the no, customer. No, no. It's not only is it not user friendly; it affects the aesthetics of a neighborhood. Because how would you like your house to be the one where 80 of your neighbors are coming and uh, getting their mail out of and leaving their garbage? Well, and not only that, think of the fact that a lot of neighborhoods, mine included, but but there's lots in Topeka don't even have sidewalks. So you're out walking along the street, kind of taking your life into your own hands. In a way. Absolutely. So there, you know, and, and theft becomes yeah. a bigger issue with uh, community group delivery like that. So we, we see a lot of folks here today, Andy. Uh, where, where are all the people here from today? Well, we got mainly from Lawrence and Topeka and okay. mainly from the postal unions, but we also have some brothers from the, uh, fr from some railroad unions out here and uh, several other unions as well. Let me ask you this, and again, maybe you can give me a short version. How is the post office funded in this? Is it a government agency or is it partially government? How is that? It's complicated. The postal service, yeah, it is complicated. So, in 1970, the postal service uh, reorganized, and it went from being a tax fair, pair funded government agency to an independent government agency. It's always been designed to be revenue neutral, to keep rates low for the sake of business and for the sake of customers. Um, and the reason that, uh, you know, so it's never really been made to, to make money. And if you think about it, in most of the country, the post office loses money. In most rural post offices, which are the majority of offices, those aren't profitable. It's not profitable to deliver to somebody 10 miles outside of town, but we're constitutionally mandated to do that. So that's something that would go away. Uh, if it becomes all about profit, uh, your service gets reduced, the number of outlets is reduced, 
the scope of the post office is reduced, and that doesn't even get into employee benefits and pay. And other people, I mean, there are 7.5 million people who are employed in the mailing industry in some way. It's a $1.4 trillion a year business. So that goes beyond just the 600,000 people that work at the Postal Service. Are those people you just mentioned, those are employees of the U.S. Postal Service pretty much though? Uh, well, no, about 600,000 are actually employees of the Postal Service. The rest work in somehow in the mailing industry, I whether see. they're whether they're in paper production, envelope okay. production, printing, uh, transportation. You know, there's, it's, there's many tentacles. Uh, and we're getting to a busy time of year for you guys with the political yes, mailers. Are. Yes, we are. Uh, that's been, I'll tell you what, I mean, 2016 was the most political mail we've ever seen. And the reason they're doing this is because it's effective. I mean, I know it's not a lot of fun to have 10 flyers in your mailbox every day, but it's revenue for us. And obviously it's effective for those political candidates. So folks, next time you get five or six different mailers from political candidates in your mailbox, don't be discouraged. Just say this is good for the U.S. Postal Service, right, Andy? Well, and it's good, and it's good for those pr for the printer who printed those as yeah. well. Yeah. So. Well, maybe for the candidates yeah, too, and, and perhaps for the candidates as well. <laughs> we we hope they're effective. But okay, Andy, that's fantastic. We we wish you guys well. Is there any? And I see here support H Res House Res 993. House Resolution 993 is uh, is the resolution opposing the privatization of the Postal Service. We currently have 219 co-sponsors. We'd love to have two more from the state of Kansas. Okay, well, Andy, maybe can I talk to a couple of these guys Absolutely. real quick? Absolutely. Okay, do you guys mind we're on Facebook Live just to what brought you out today? And, and I see the sign here. We're trying to get that on our Facebook Live. But what what uh, what brought you out today? Tell me your name, where you're from, also. If you Thomas know Beck here from Topeka. Okay, Thomas. And I'm out here to support my job, make sure I don't lose it. Are you concerned at all at this point with this resolution, or do you think it's something that's floating out there? What's your thoughts uh, on that? For me, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, I think they're serious about it, but I'm not sure how much support there is behind it. So trying to get the word out ahead of time, being proactive. Yes, yes exactly. Did you want to add anything to that, or? Okay, what about you? Would you like to add anything? And tell me who you are and where you're from. Uh, yeah, Connie Osterhouse, Local 270, APWU Union. Uh, one of the things that they're wanting to do is not move this forward. They want to privatize the Postal Service, but they're wanting to do it after the elections. And we are actually in the Constitution, and a lot of people were the, uh, voted the number one uh, government service, and we are the second um, largest employer of veterans, and we have the most diverse workforce in America, and we want to deliver the mail for you. This is a service that we provide. We provide a lot of free things for the American population, and we want to be able to continue with that. And I think you're one of those folks that people kind of take for granted, <laughs> like a lot of jobs, you know, we just expect you to be there, but then all of a sudden, as things change, you'll, 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 it, people really start wondering what happened, right? Exactly, and it can be fixed if they just change the mandate that we have to pre-fund future retiree. No one else has to uh, fund this for health care benefits, um, and if they do away with that mandate, we will be solvent and we will continue to thrive as we have in the past. So they need to fix it in Congress for us to be able to continue to be viable. Maybe one last question, and then we'll sign up. My battery's getting low on this phone. I can come back in a minute. But do you feel like uh, this is important to the public? And if so, can they let their representatives know? Would, would you like to have them? Uh, absolutely, because if they were to privatize the Postal Service, people in small-town America would take the hit. They would be paying significantly more money to for their services. Um, they're, they're, uh, the elderly may not be getting their medicine on time, and um, if they chunk it, out, it will be the poor and small town America that will take the biggest hit for this. Okay, well, thank you guys. Everybody, thank you very much. You're it welcome. was nice to meet you. Nice to meet thank you, you as guys. well, sir. Yeah, and, and it's nice that the rain has stopped now for a few minutes, right? Yeah. Andy's uh, maybe over talking to somebody else, but well, but we thank you and uh, wish you well. How long are y'all going to be out here today? If anybody wants to come by and say hours. hi. Okay, so if anybody wants to come by from the public, you'd be glad to talk to them, right? Oh, absolutely. And thank today, and the, and, the, and the other important thing is, just so people know, being that it's Columbus Day, no mail today, right? That's right. That's <laughs> so don't go out looking for your mail, yeah, folks. It's not going to be there today. That's why we're here today. It's a, it's a holiday. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, sir. And there you go.
you hear it right there, U.S. mail, not for sale, they were saying. So, more folks are turning out here. Again, if you want to come down and visit with these folks today, they're off because it's Columbus Day holiday. Do feel free to come down to be here until about noon or so here at the main, former main post office, a beautiful building downtown here at 5th and Kansas Avenue in downtown Topeka. Okay, we'll call it off here. Reporting from a South, or uh, four, five, uh, let's see, I guess we're right at 5th and South Kansas Avenue. We'll just call it that. 5th and South Kansas Avenue. Reporting here for cgonline.com. This is Billy Anderson.